So what we're going to do here is um, take a look at an example. And uh, this is um, James Croft, who was a student in the public narrative class about four years ago. And um, the final assignment in that class is students uh, record a five minute public narrative that includes their self, their us, now it's called a linked narrative, a complete public narrative. So uh, when you take a look at this, see if you can tell when is he telling a story of self, when is he telling a story of us, when is he telling a story of now? That's number one. Second, ask yourself why he chooses the moments that he chooses around which to build the arc of this story, okay? The specific moments, moments of challenge, choice, outcome. Those are kind of the, the moments. Third, why the details? Why the details? And fourth, what are the values then that are experienced or communicated through the story? Let's take a look. 6.12 seconds. That's about how long it takes to fall 604 feet. And 604 feet is about how far Tyler Clementi fell after he jumped off the George Washington Bridge. Now, as we know, he took his own life because live video footage of him having a romantic encounter with another man was streamed live on the internet by his college roommate. Just one of a very long list of young people who have taken their lives because of anti-LGBT bullying in the past few weeks. Now, I never experienced anything like what Tyler went through when I was at school, but I was bullied for being gay. You see, when I was a kid, I was a ballet dancer. And every week I squeeze into a leotard and blue shiny hot pants. It was uh, quite an outfit. And I spent an evening practicing demi pies and pirouettes. And I loved it. I loved the discipline. The music played on the old piano. The feel of the wood beneath my feet. I even secretly quite liked the outfit. <laughs> but my schoolmates and some of my teachers didn't like ballet as much as I did. And one of my teachers, a PE teacher, used to make fun of me. He used to say how girly I was, how dancing is not something that a boy should do. I remember the sneer on his face as I walked past, and I remember that he was the first person to call me a fag, which at seven years old, I didn't really understand. I remember in high school how gay was only ever used as a term of abuse. And I remember one cold morning sitting in assembly while the principal intoned homosexuals deserve our pity and our prayers. And I sat among hundreds of other boys thinking I was all alone in the world and that I was the only one who had this problem. Now, not everyone may have experienced something like that, but we all know, I think, what it means to feel alone, to feel like there's no one on our side. Perhaps you were too tall and the short kids made fun of you. Or perhaps you were too short and you got it from the taller ones. Or perhaps you are too smart or too dumb, or from the wrong side of town, or the wrong race. We all know, I think, even if just for a moment, what it feels like to think that there's no one on your side, to think that no one has your back. And all of us, if there are young people in our lives that we care about, can agree that we don't want this to happen to them. Imagine, if you can, what it must be like to come home and see a strange shape hanging from a tree in your backyard, twisting in the wind, the creak of the branch as it bends beneath the weight, and that feeling in your gut as you get closer and you realize what it is hanging there, who it is, who it was, because that was Seth Walsh, 13, who hung himself from a tree in his backyard. It was Billy Lucas who hung himself at his grandmother's house, and it was Raymond Chase who hung himself in his door. And it could have been your brother, your sister, your son, your daughter, or your friend. It could have been one of us. So I know, I, I only came out in March this year, after 10 years, 10 years after I first told my parents that I thought I was gay. And in those 10 years, I lost a lot of opportunities to make a difference. I was a high school teacher and every day I wasn't out was a day I deprived the gay student of a positive role model. And I'm not willing to waste any more time. I have to act now. We have to act now. 
because it isn't enough to let these things happen and then mourn them afterwards. We need to catch these kids before they jump. And there is something we can do to help as a start. Journalist Dan Savage has started a campaign, the It Gets Better campaign, to send messages of hope to teenagers who are being bullied because they're gay or for whatever reason, that they should have hope for their future, that they do have something to live for. And I think that if we made such a video, as Harvard students with glittering careers ahead of us and sparkling degrees, then we could make a difference. So we need people to hold a camera, to share their stories, to do editing and sound, to stand in a big group and say it gets better. No contribution is too small. And if you want to get involved and you're an undergraduate, talk to Tevin here. Do you mind waving? Oh, hi. And he'll tell you how to get involved. And if you're a graduate student or if you just want to come along from 5 to 7 p.m. in the Elliott Lyman Room in Longfellow Hall at the Education Schools campus, stand up and say we're standing with these kids. We've got your back. Let's catch them before they jump. Thank you. Woo.